This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Tuesday, February 7th. I'm Stephanie Haney, here with your top stories. And we start off in East Palestine this afternoon, where the experts in charge of the controlled release of a dangerous chemical following Friday night's train derailment say that operation was a success. But people who live close to where the train came off the tracks are staying inside because of the smell and the smoky haze. East Palestine evacuees are filling up hotels while they wait to go home, and one of them tells our Lydia Aspara that she feels betrayed. From miles away, you can see and hear the explosion in East Palestine. It looked like a black mushroom in the air. I'm worried about like anything in the air. I'm worried about the kids, you know, of course, it's very worrisome. Cindy Leboy is the general manager of Coco's Pizza in Poland. Order for Jenny. And while she is 15 miles from the train derailment, she has taken orders from folks who came here to evacuate. It brings a lot of people into this area as well. All of our hotels are starting to get booked up. They are booked to capacity, including at this Hampton Inn in Boardman. Lisa Fulton is an evacuee ordering pizza. Okay, thank you. She lives right near the tracks. When we looked out the window, we could see right where the fire, that the cars were like on fire, kept on going down the tracks. She left on Friday, went home on Saturday, and left again on Sunday. Fulton is upset with the city, the rail company, and the fire department. Do you feel like you were misled? I think so, yes. How so? Um, because I think they hid things from us. Initially, Fulton said they were told to evacuate as a precaution, not to expect something like this to ever happen. Who knows when we'll go back? I said, because it's never going to be the same again because the air's going to be terrible, the water's going to be terrible, the ground's going to be terrible. And Norfolk Southern, they said, oh, we don't know what was in those. They knew exactly what was going to, you know, they knew exactly what was in those tankers. Certainly a disaster there in East Palestine. Thank you very much, Lydia. Now, officials held a press conference this afternoon, and they said that all four of the cars containing vinyl chloride are no longer burning. We'll have more details for you on that this evening. Now, tonight, President Joe Biden will deliver his State of the Union address, and Pamela Walker will be there. She's the mother of Jalen Walker, the man who Akron police shot and killed in June. Pamela and her daughter are going as the guests of Ohio Congress member Amelia Strong Seitz. Aubrey Buckley reports. I don't want him to ever be forgotten. A mother in mourning on a mission to keep her son's name alive. My heart is broken. It's, it just, it literally feels like I, only half of it is hanging there because it was ripped off on June 27th when they killed my son. It's been over seven months since Jalen Walker was shot and killed by eight Akron police officers who fired more than 90 shots at him. Tuesday, his mother Pamela and sister Jada will attend President Joe Biden's State of the Union address as personal guests of Ohio Congresswoman Amelia Sykes. Let's start with something where people can be held accountable for it. Face fire! His family pushing for change and new laws planning to share their story with lawmakers, joining a closed-door session with the Congressional Black Caucus Tuesday. Tyree Nichols' family is expected to be there as well, a month after he was brutally beaten to death by police in Memphis. Video of that tragic scene reigniting the ever-present pain of how they lost Jalen. What we can do, you know, to change this, so moving forward, other sisters, mothers, you know, brothers, whoever the relationship is, they don't have to go through it because it does not feel good at all. And I would hate for anybody, you know, to feel this way. I mean, it's horrible to be beat to death. That's horrible. It's horrible to be shot down like an animal. That's horrible. Thank you for that report, Bree. Now, Pamela says that she wants to see the Akron police officers that shot and killed her son prosecuted and put in prison. Now, President Biden's State of the Union address is happening at 9 p.m. tonight. The photos you see here show his final preparations for what's expected to be his largest audience of the year in this new era of a divided government in Washington, D.C. Biden is expected to say the state of our economy is strong and could announce a 2024 presidential campaign. Our own Carmen Blackwell will have more for us on what to expect this evening. 
Now in Willoughby, police are investigating another round of car thefts at a dealership, this time at Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Willoughby. Six vehicles were stolen from there on Monday morning. We're told several people broke into a back garage window and took a bunch of key fobs once they got in. Now one of those vehicles has been recovered, but the five others are still missing. This is the latest in a string of car thefts across Northeast Ohio. And Cuyahoga County is in need of a new sheriff. Interim Sheriff Stephen Hammett has resigned after eight months on the job. He's the seventh person to hold the position since 2010. According to the county executive's office, Hammett's last day will be next Friday, February 17th. An interim sheriff will be appointed while the county searches to fill that job permanently. Also in Cuyahoga County, a sheriff's deputy was patrolling along I-77 North near the Ohio Turnpike when he got into a car accident. A county spokesperson tells us the deputy was working a traffic detail as part of the department's High Visibility Enforcement Grant, which helps enforce traffic laws on the highway. The deputy was in the middle of pulling someone over for a violation when the accident happened. Both the deputy and the driver of the other vehicle were taken to the hospital. We do know the deputy has been discharged from the hospital, but we don't know the condition of the other driver right now. We do know that the Cuyahoga County Animal Shelter is begging for help. In a Facebook post this morning, the shelter says it is packed to the gills with animals up for adoption. And that's a real problem because when the shelter gets this full, it creates a more stressful environment for those animals. So if you've been considering adopting or even fostering an animal, now really is a great time to do it. Now yesterday, the Cleveland Police Department invited members of the community to see renderings of its proposed new headquarters. It will be inside the Art Craft Building on Superior Avenue, and it comes with a $90 million price tag. Cleveland police tell us their operations are spread out across the city, and this project is all about unifying the department. They say the building isn't just for them. It's a space for members of the community to use as well. Now here at 3 News, we are highlighting the incredible achievements of the black community during Black History Month. And today's special feature is all about Louis Stokes. Attorney, politician, and civil rights pioneer, Louis Stokes was born in Cleveland in 1925. Stokes made history in 1968, becoming the first black man elected to Congress from Ohio. He would go on to serve 15 terms in the United States House of Representatives. Stokes was the first black man on the House Appropriations Committee. He also chaired the Select Committee on Assassinations, known for its probe into the killings of President Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A little known fact, Lewis and his brother Carl are cousins of R&B legend Rick James. We salute black history maker Lewis Stokes for his contributions to politics and civil rights. An incredible person from right here in our area. Now we'll have more incredible stories of black excellence all throughout the month of February. So stay with us for that. Now a record that was once thought to be unbreakable looks like it is about to fall. LeBron James is closing in on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time NBA scoring record. After scoring 27 points in the Lakers' loss to the New Orleans Pelicans on Saturday, the Akron native now finds himself just 35 points away from matching and 36 points away from breaking Abdul-Jabbar's career scoring record of 38,387 points. That's a lot of points, and that is a record that has stood since the six-time MVP retired after the 1988-1989 season. And LeBron James said that he thinks it's one of the greatest records in sports in general and that it's right up there with the home run record in baseball, one of those records that you just don't ever see or think would be broken. Now, he's in his 20th season of his NBA career, and he's 38 years old, and he's averaging 30 points per game, which puts him on pace to break Abdul-Jabbar's record maybe in the next two games. Now for context, Abdul-Jabbar was 40 when he set the record and he had also played 20 seasons. So if you're wondering when will the kid from Akron become the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, well, here's the Lakers' upcoming schedule. Tonight they play the Oklahoma City Thunder, that's at 10 p.m. Eastern. Thursday they play the Milwaukee Bucks, that's also at 10 p.m. Eastern. Saturday, it's an 8.30 game against the Golden State Warriors and then Monday, it's the Portland Trail Blazers again at 10 p.m. Eastern start time. So we will be watching that very closely. All right, the Cleveland Museum of Art is home to a world-class collection of art spanning thousands of years. The volume alone can be really intimidating for people who want to visit and check it out. So for this rendition of Mission Possible, 
Our Maureen Kyle explains how the museum relies on cutting edge technology to make its collections more approachable and connect you with those works of art. We're always thinking about what are the audience's needs, what do we, can we do, how can we make art relevant to all. These are questions the Cleveland Museum of Art's digital team ask every day. A decade ago, when Art Lens launched, the 40-foot interactive wall was a hit, not just with me, but countless other visitors. Started playing around, opening pictures, and it's wild. Our goal is to give people the tool sets to look closer, dive deeper, and feel comfortable in the galleries. Museum attendance jumped as visitors enjoyed a deeper understanding of the art. So what we found through the research is that people who spent five minutes in Artlands spend 30 to 60 minutes longer in our galleries. Today, the Artlands Gallery has four parts. A gameplay-based studio introduces the collection. Exhibition space mixes master works and tech. At the interactive wall, art you find and create is saved to your phone via the Artlands app. The modern space is keeping up with those raised on technology. Digital natives do not use interfaces. They just start touching and moving. If it's designed well, their brain gets it, and then off they go. Eye tracking, facial recognition, and artificial intelligence enhance the experience. The museum's digital team continues pushing the envelope and is already teasing Art Lens 3.0. But how do we take AI to a new level that it really is about creating and then engaging in new ways? These innovations are putting the Cleveland Museum of Art on the map. Software code developed here is available and in use by other museums like the Smithsonian. We're about sharing it with the world. We want other museums to take it to a new level. Revealing Krishna, Journey to Cambodia's Sacred Mountain, ranks as one of the museum's most successful exhibits. Through a blend of art, tech, and design, it tells the complex story of stone fragments to complete sculpture restoration. Immersive video and HoloLens tech was used, but the story is what visitors remembered. What that told us was that people like to leave learning something but experiencing it, making it seamless, making it really magical and ways in, but not talking about this like hardware or software that's cool. Fulfilling the museum's mission to remove barriers, create new experiences, and engage the public through art. Especially the people in Northeast Ohio are welcomed into the space, that feel that, that it's a place for them, and that they are able to have those transformative experiences. Maureen Kyle, 3 News. The Cleveland Museum of Art really is such an incredible resource that we have right here in our backyard. And if you're not aware, too, they also do a monthly event called Mix, where you can go have a cocktail, enjoy their collections as well. They do an excellent job. I recommend getting out there. It's a really good time. All right, now we have an exciting update for you from Cleveland City Council. They have approved a plan for renovating East 4th Street that will cost $1.65 million to create the city's first designated outdoor refreshment area, otherwise known as a Dora. That allows people to buy alcohol from the restaurants in that space and then walk around from place to place with their drinks. So now the council needs to pass legislation to create the area, and then the city has to apply through the liquor division to get the proper permissions. All right, before we go here, we have to introduce you to someone who might be the next Sheldon Cooper, you know, the character from The Big Bang Theory and the spinoff Young Sheldon. This is nine-year-old David Balagoon, and he just graduated from a charter high school in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yes, I did say high school. He loves science and already has his future planned out. He wants to study black holes and supernovas as an astrophysicist. His parents say they are not quite ready to let him head off to Harvard by himself. I, uh, I can understand wanting to hang on to him for a little bit longer, but man, that's a, that's a mind that you're going to have to occupy. What an incredible young person. All right, thanks for being with us here on today's edition of 3 News Daily. Remember, you can always catch the live version. We do that every day at 1 p.m. as part of NBC News Daily. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from Northeast Ohio.